This is Comprehensive Game Tree and in this set of videos I will be explaining all of the different aspects of the game tree, uh, the different node types and how to use how to use those different node types to build character sheets and also I will be explaining namespace and the different syntax models with namespace and how to use it appropriately. So the first thing I'm going to do is introduce you to the different types of nodes. Now all of the nodes can be found here inside your Trapes OpenRPG feature node and then we click on templates and then we see the different different nodes that are available. We have different PC sheets we also have nodes and then containers and tools. And we're going to stick mostly with the nodes and containers. So I'm going to create um, all of these nodes inside the game tree. I'll create new copies of them and then we'll I'll go over the different nodes. So I'll create a text box node, a new list box node, a new grid node, and I'll skip the web link and the web image because we're not really going to use those very much for creating uh, player character sheets um, but I'll create uh, a new folder node a new tabber node a new splitter node and a new form node and these are the basic sheet these are the basic nodes that we're gonna work with most of the data is held in here and these are the these are the predominant nodes that we're going to use for creating character sheets. So there's several different ways to interact with your nodes. If we right click on our game tree, we can look at tree properties and then we can see what our double click action is and we can also change that. Right now it's set as use. So when we double click a node, it uses the node. We can then choose design or chat or pretty print. Now when we choose chat it sends it to chat and then if we choose pretty print it'll then open up a window which sends the nodes data into HTML it converts it to HTML and then it uh, shows it in a kind of pretty pretty format but we're just going to keep it on use. So if I double click it it then opens it up and it, it uses the node. Um, I can also right click on it and then I have all of those features again use design pretty print I can send it to a player if I'm sending the actual node to the player they will then receive it uh, and I can also send it to chat and then I can whisper to a player I can also change the icon delete it clone it and define its usefulness and then I can also save it to my hard drive or export it as HTML. So let's let's see what happens when we send the text node to chat. It will send text, the name of the node, and then the contents of the node's data. So when we design nodes, we have several different options. I'll open up the the node here for text editor and design mode or for text and design mode and we have multi-line send as macro hide title and send button we can see that this is multi-line and it does come with the send button if we choose to remove the send button when we reopen it there's no send button it's just a multi-line text node we can also then remove multi-line and then it becomes a single line text node so we get a lot of options. Um, I keep it as multi-line and s keep with the send button for now. The list box is uh, where this is where I like to put all of my rollers. If I'm creating a list of rollers, what I like to do is open it up and then I can I add different options here for the different types of rollers so I can reference say uh, 1d20 plus my strength modifier to do a strength check. So we have different options for list nodes. We have the drop down option we can add a send button, hide the title and send as macro. We'll just add a send button and uh, then we'll change this to a list box and you can see that the list node then appears differently when you open it. 
and if we ch change it to a radio box again it's a little different and then we can change it to checklist and with checklist we get this option where we can actually pick multiple options in our lists to send and then it will send those different options all at once now we have here down our options we have caption and value and what what you're actually sending to chat is the value so if we go and edit option one and we'll give it a a new caption so it says option one then we can open that and then it'll say option one but we're still sending the actual value that's in that option this helps you keep your list organized uh, so you don't have to actually see the value with all of the namespace syntax but yet you can still have it and send that syntax now our grid node is where I like to put all of the ability scores because you can use using namespace internally reference the different columns and rows of the grid to create uh, a an ability modifier and then you can reference that modifier later on so this is what it looks like in design mode again we we have our title here all of our nodes will allow us to modify the title and we can add rows remove rows add columns and remove columns and some of these nodes will have this little reference button but that's uh, that's a new addition that's be been added and is actually going to be deprecated in the next milestone so we won't look at that so to make a, an abilities grid what we're what I'm going to do is add four rows so later on we'll have an uh, we'll have this grid and turn it into an abilities grid. And then when we double click on it to use it, we see the changes we've applied. Now the group node is one of these nodes that hasn't seen development. Considering OpenRPG is pretty old and it hasn't seen active development until recently, uh, the group node really just acts as a container. It has no use function. And when you click on it in design mode, we get this columns and border, and that's really not used. And it, it probably won't be in the next milestone. I'll go a, a different route with it. But we can change the, the title of it, and we can still use it to uh, contain other nodes. So to help keep us organized. The tabber is the node that I like to use the most. It's a, it's a nice container. It, opens up as a tabber when you open it up in design mode um, you can change the title when you add nodes to it each node gets its own tab so I kinda like it because it keeps things organized for me and you can add more tabbers to already tabs uh, to to the tabber the splitter node will help you keep nodes organized in a form you can again change the title but then you have the option to give it a horizontal split or give it a vertical split and then our form node is basically just a a node that holds other nodes uh, and then it keeps them inside a little form and that's kinda nice if you want to keep a small form factor for your uh, for your node design so let's go ahead and start putting some of these nodes together. Um, I have the form splitter tabber, group, grid, list box, and text node. And what I'll do is I'll I'll take these and start putting nodes together to create something of a PC sheet. And then we'll build off of that PC sheet through different episodes. So what I want to do is rename my tabber here. And there's two ways I can rename it. I can design it and rename it, or I can click on it and press the F2 button. And that will rename it also. So this is my PC sheet. Now I'll create another 
tabber. And I'll add this new tabber to my new PC sheet. So I drag it and it asks me to add as a child. So I say yes. And then I will add the text node. Yes. And in fact, I'll just add all of these nodes to the PC sheet tabber. So now I have my PC sheet node. And when I double click on it to use it, it'll open up. And then each node with its different name has a tab with its name. And then I can click on that and see the information that that has. So I'll show you what a splitter container does. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this text node. I will clone it not once, but twice. And then I'll add these two text nodes, these two clones, to the splitter. So when I open it up, I get the two text nodes, and it's split vertically. And I can see that they have uh, different, or they, they have the same text, but I, I can modify that. Excuse me. I can modify that so that it says it'll have the same name. And I can then design that. And when I open it up now in design mode, I see the nodes that are in it. And I'll uh, put it, I'll give it a horizontal split. So then when I open it up, the nodes are split horizontally. This is one way to keep a lot of node data inside a nice form factor. And uh, well, I'll show you. I'll show you next step with the form node. So let's say I want to have a form node hold a lot of data. What I'll do then is I'll clone this text node again, and I'll add that to the form. Then I'll add the splitter to the form. So what's going to happen when I double click on the form to use it is all of these nodes are going to be inside one form. So I see the splitter. Then I scroll down and there. I had to move the splitter. And then I see text one, text two, and those are inside the splitter. And then I see text one. And I can also move these around. Uh, now I'll, I'll move text one, but I'll say no to add it as a child, and it will move. So then when I open up the form, the one on top is text one, and then the splitter is still pretty small. I'll change that to a vertical split. I'll probably get a better view of it, much better view of it. So that's how splitters are going to work, and that's how forms are going to work. And really what it's for is to provide a nice form factor for the end user. Um, as for groups, again, we're really not going to see anything with a group. What I'll do to show you is clone this text node again and add that to the group. And we still have no use functionality with it, but if I click on the PC sheet, I actually don't even see the group inside of it. Because there's really no there's no panel for it. Now as for the tabber, if I clone the text node and then add it to the tabber, I can then clone it multiple times. And when I click on my PC sheet and then click over to the tabber, you'll see that the tabber again has different uh, tabs for each node inside of it. And even the form, when I click on the form, it still presents the same form factor as if we just double click on the form.